Handballstage. So Ray, you're 12 years old, why don't you tell me about your dad? He started a drug and he's been addicted to it and it got worse and worse. He's been stealing stuff from us, he's breaking me, my brother, my mom, my sister's hearts. Are you worried about your dad? I'm really scared that my dad's gonna die. What drugs are you addicted to? Crack, cocaine. I've stolen rent money, taken my daughter's bike to the pawn shop. Are you high when you I'm like, this? I'm high when I'm doing things like this, that's right. It makes me feel like a monster. The little girl sleeps with her stuff under the pillow because she's afraid that you might that's steal right. it. I'm told that you were a boxer. You're a pretty good boxer. Yeah. How did you go from being the strict, regimented guy to where your kids are afraid that you're going to steal from them? It's not right. I don't deserve it. The kids don't deserve it. He has taken her to a crack house. You put your own daughter in danger. Either you do something, you step up to the plate, you change, you be a father, you do grow up. And if you don't, I definitely want a divorce and you won't see the children. I can't do it. <laughs> You're a fighter, right? You're a boxer? That's right. This is it, man. This is the fight of your life. Welcome to the show. My first guest is Saray. Saray, you're 12 years old. Yep. And you're here because of your father, right? Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell me about your dad? Well, he's been tearing our family apart for the past six, seven years, and he's breaking me, my brother, my mom, my sister's hearts, and he steals stuff. We've had three Xbox for the past six years, and he's stolen two of them, some movies, game systems, TVs and he's never home anymore. Like this is your father we're talking about. Yep. And he steals from you. Mm -hmm. Why does he steal from you? Because um, a few years ago, like five years ago, he started a drug and he tried it and he's been addicted to it. At first, it was like six, seven months and he'd be clean and then he started all over again and it got worse and worse. I can't even imagine being 12 years old and talking about your father stealing from you. That's got to be a tough thing for you to do. And you ever talk to your father about it saying, hey, Dad? Well, I don't really get a chance to talk to him because he's never home. And the only time that he is home is either when I'm at school or when he's here spending um, at home spending time with me. And I try not to spoil those times and hurt the family and get talking about that and everyone so to get crying. So small times that you get yeah. together, you don't want to confront them. Are you worried about your dad, that he's doing drugs and yes. has to resort to At stealing? at night I'm worried that he's going to get hurt. Like if he steals money from someone, someone's going to hurt him. And I'm really scared that my dad's going to die really early. And at 12 years old, are you aware what kind of drugs your dad's doing? Mm -hmm. Or what he's is he doing? He's been doing marijuana and pot and that's all that I know. You, he ever do drugs around you? Um, when he does do the drugs and I'm like around, he makes me leave to another room so I don't smell it and I don't get sick from it and stuff. Has he been a good dad to you? He's a very good dad. I love him very much and he's been very, very close to me. But when he started getting really, really bad with the drugs, I, he got farther and farther away from me and my brothers and sisters. Well, you're a very brave little girl, and I'm glad that you came and you asked for help for your dad. So, Sway, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to go back to the green room, and we'll try to do whatever we can to help him out. Okay. Okay? Thanks for coming. All right, why don't we bring out Saray's father, Don. How you doing, Don? Good. How are you, Steve? I'm pretty good. Now, your daughter just comes out. You hear what she had to say, right? I did. And how do you feel when your 12-year-old daughter is saying that about you? Horrible. Horrible? Makes you feel bad? Yes, it makes me feel now, very bad. Now, she's 12 years old, and I didn't want to really break it down to her that... She knows. She knows what? She knows I have a drug problem with more than more than the marijuana. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, you're not stealing from your kids because of pot. That's right. That's right. Yeah. 
What drugs are you addicted to? Cocaine. Cocaine? Is, crack? Yes. Crack, cocaine, yes. You've missed the birth of your children because of this drug use? Um, it's kind of a yes or no answer. No, I didn't, I didn't miss any birth of any of my children. Um, you were in the room it, the whole time? It, it took, I was there, yes, for all of them. And, but it took priority instead of, you know, uh, celebrating with my wife and with my family about, you know, bringing a, a beautiful child into the world. Uh, I made it more important to uh, run off and disregard my responsibilities and, you know, s search out the drug. Stolen the rent money? I've stolen rent money. I've stolen TVs from us. Um, we used to have a collection of movies that we watched together. I've stolen movies. I've taken my daughter's bike to the pawn shop many times and have tried, you know, to get it back many times and until I ran out of all options and I could not. It's not right. I don't deserve it. The kids don't deserve it. He has taken her to a crack house. I can't do it. <laughs> You're a fighter, right? You're a boxer? That's right. This is it, man. This is the fight of your life. never been addicted to drugs, I never did drugs. But at some point when you're pushing your little girl's bike down the road or you know you're taking your kids things, and I'm a father, are you ever thinking like, what the hell am I doing? I'm taking my little girl's bike to sell it? You know, Steve, when I'm, when I'm doing these things, when I'm taking my daughter's bike or my son's Xbox, um, things that are very near and dear to my children's hearts, at that point in time, if I'm, if I'm to that point of stealing something like that from my children or from my wife, I, I can't see that. You know, I can't understand um, so the are consequence. You, are you high when you're I'm doing like, this? I'm like, I'm high when I'm doing things like this. That's right. And I, and I have a tunnel vision. All I can think about is getting my next fix. That's all that counts. That's and it doesn't matter that I you're can't. pushing your kids stuff right. down the street. Right. Are you sober now? I've been for a couple of three weeks now, yes. And but no, that's not, that's very short lived. I, no, I, I, I believe me. The point I'm making is you're thinking straight right now. That's right. So now that you know that you did these things, that you're taking your little girl's bike, that you're stealing from your family, how does that make you feel? I'm atrocious. It makes me feel like a monster. You know what I mean? Uh, it's like things you wouldn't do to your worst enemies, you know? And these are my children, and they're supposed to look up to me, and, and I wouldn't. I Your little girl sleeps with her stuff under the pillow because she's afraid that you might That's steal right. it. Yeah. Now, I'm told that you you were you were a boxer, right? That's right. And you were a pretty good boxer. I yeah. saw the articles back mm -hmm. there. I was an amateur boxer for a lot of years. Won Golden Glove titles and stuff, and fought a lot of very good fighters. And did very well. Okay, that's what like I get kind of confused. Being a boxer, the discipline, the regimen of, you know, here's one of the articles I saw backstage. To be a boxer, to be as successful as you were, how did you go from being the strict, regimented guy to where your kids are afraid that you're going to steal from them? How did you, I mean, a guy like you, you would think you're taking care of yourself. But I have more fight in me than that. Uh, growing up, I watched cocaine tear my family apart and thought that I would absolutely never be faced with that kind of a situation where I would actually have to say yes or no to something like that. Being a teenager, hanging out, drinking, and, and trying a few different things, uh, it arrived. And, you know, the door was locked and everything was very secretive and the guy started putting some stuff into a spoon and curiosity killed the cat. What did you try? I tried crack, crack cocaine. 
Okay. And so you, you did it because and, your friend did you know, it? I was very much against it, you know, because I had seen what it did to my family and never thought I would put myself in that kind of a situation. Uh, but, you know, it's like the forbidden fruit, you know what I mean? There's just some things you just don't mess with, not even try. And it was just something I just happened to try, and I opened up Pandora's box. It's, I wish I could take it back. And that one time was all it took. That one time was all it took. Steve, that was all it took, one time. And, and you know, if I didn't do it every day after that, it was on my mind. And eventually, after a while, I just I started not thinking, and I just started doing what I needed to do to get the drug. Whether it was uh, steal rent money from my wife, take uh, you know unexpected boxing matches against men that were undefeated, 12, 15, and all, and risking getting my life taken or my brains punched out to get money. And instead of doing the right thing with those, when I had kids in the house that needed diapers and stuff like that, I'd take that money and I'd run with it. And I just, I had no kind of control. And how long have you been an addict? I'd say about seven, eight years, almost 10 even. So, so almost Sheree's whole life. Almost Sheree's whole life, that's right. You pawned your wedding rings? That's right, I did. I pawned, I traded, I traded one wedding, wedding ring and I, Slipped a ring off of my wife's finger while she was sleeping one time. You got high and you missed your daughter's birthday party? I did. Both of them. They both had the same birthday. I had just, a couple nights before that birthday, I had stolen an Xbox 360. And my wife actually believed me or wanted to believe me that I wanted to get that Xbox back so bad for my son and for my daughter that she actually gave me a $100 bill to get it back, and I promised that I would, and I swore, I swore on everything, and that I would get that back for them, and I disappeared with it, and I didn't show up to the birthday party, and I broke my children's heart. My daughter, both my daughters. It's not right, I don't deserve it, the kids don't deserve it. He has taken her to a crack house. You put your own daughter in danger. What is it gonna take for you to Say, okay, that's it, man. I'm not ever putting my lips to another crack pipe again. And if you don't, I definitely want a divorce, and you won't see the children. You are the fuck. You're off my stage. Wife has to take the TV out of the house whenever she leaves. She has done that, yes. I hope it's a small TV. It's not a small TV. She had to have help. It so every time TV. she leaves the house, she's, she's got to move the TV about that size right there. She's got to move that TV out of the house so you don't steal it. That's right. She did. Because if she doesn't take it out, you're going to come in and you're going to steal it. I have stolen it, yes. Because of ever you're stealing, not supporting your family, your wife has had to shoplift to feed your kids. Yeah, I put her in a position where she needed to do that. And the things that you've done to support your habit? I lie, I cheat, I steal. I've stolen from the people I love the most. Um, I've broken my father and my family's heart time and time again. When you're using it, how often do you use it? Sometimes days, every day. Sometimes all day, all night, you know what I mean? It might be until the money runs out. And then when the money runs out, I start scheming, I start stealing, I start lying and cheating, you know, doing all those things. What was your life before, like, you started doing drugs? Before that? Yeah. I was very motivated. I thought I knew where I was going. I wanted to have a professional boxing career. I, uh, I trained a lot of young fighters and stuff like that down at the gym. I was respected. People looked up to me. And now it's like, you know, uh, now the boxing club is the only place I can go, and they still respect me. But everybody knows what I do, so, and they just respect me because of what I did, not because of what I do anymore. What's the longest you've been clean? Out of the past seven years, I've done about, I did about four months, and it was pretty much at my father's mercy. I was staying with him, and he pretty much kept me under lock and key. He kept, he knew right where I was at all times, you know what I mean? And that's the way it was. It was almost like taking care of a child. You've been clean for three weeks, right? That's right. But two of them, you were in jail, right? A week of it, I was in jail. So, I mean, 
You can't really take credit for that week, right? Not taking credit. I can't take credit for anything. Let's bring out your wife. You know, you've said many times that you were going to change. You promised me and the kids that you were going to change over and over again. Um, you've pawned just about everything that we own, from TVs to stereo systems to money. I have to take a TV down if I go to the corner store that is way too big for me to carry. Um, you've said numerous times over and over and over and over and over that you're going to change, and it's not right. I don't deserve it. The kids don't deserve it. And I don't know if I can, you know, believe that you want to change. You say you want to change, but I don't know. I don't know whether to believe it anymore. I do want to change. But I just can't imagine ever having a drug control me that much that I would go to the length of stealing from my own children, you know, from our son that is four years old, you know, or from our daughter that's 12. She's not stupid. She knows what's going on now. They all know. Why do you stay with him through all this? I do love him. Um, I know he loves the children, and I've seen, you know what I mean? Like, I've seen him where he's broken down, he's cried, he's, you know, wants to change and tell, you know, um, and he's very sincere about it. And I've seen who he really is, you know what I mean, who he really can be. There's been times, you know, six, seven months, and I know it may not seem like long to you or anybody, but that he was clean. That is a long time being clean. Right. And he's a totally different person. He's a wonderful father. He's a wonderful husband. And um, it just seems like almost like a roller coaster ride. You know what I mean? Because I'll get really, you know, back to how we were in the beginning. Um, and the kids will get closer to him. And then it's just a big letdown all over again. Do you ever feel they put your kids' lives in danger? Um, I was told from Saray that he has taken her to a crack house that, that um, he's had her go into another room while he did, I guess, what he did. I can't do it. <laughs> You're a fighter, right? You're a boxer? That's right. This is it, man. This is the fight of your life. It's one thing to steal from your kids, from your family, which is just blows my mind that anybody can do it. You destroy it's your whole family. Disgusting. But you put your own daughter in danger. You you take your daughter to a crack house. I, I mean, what what I what the is that, man? <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, that's, never... that's, that's where you just totally step over the line. That's why I can't get mad. That's why I can start hating a, a, another human being. You take your child and you put him in it. You, you know, yeah, you, I wasn't thinking when I was taking a bike to the pawn shop or the TV, but taking your daughter to a crack house. I never brought my daughter to a crack house. She's lying? Your daughter's I'm not, lying? I'm not going to say that she lied. She's I'm not just, lying, I'm. Don. You know, I did, there is a time where I had her wait downstairs and I went up into a building, but I never okay, brought, okay. I've never brought what her could, Who's protecting your daughter then? Right, I'm While you're trying. up getting high, who's protecting her? Right. Well, who goes to crack houses? Crackheads? Right. Nobody normal. Would you, would you leave your daughter around crackheads? I would like to be able to say that I wouldn't. But you did. What if something, God forbid, happened to your daughter? While well, you're she, you're up there getting high, what if another crackhead comes and goes, wow, little girl I could sell? I would never be able to forgive myself. I don't know how you forgive yourself for any of this, really, but that one there. I 
Do you think about that, that you left your daughter outside while you went in and got high? You know, I, 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 at the point in time, I would say no. I wasn't thinking about it. Do you think about it now? Yeah, of course I think about and it. And like when you now. think about it, what do you think I of? I think I'm a monster. I dis I'm disgusted with myself. I've broken this family down. He's a completely, completely different person when he's on that. He's mean, very mean. You know, you know? I'm, I've become hated and I hate myself, you know, because of these things I've done, because I, I love my children and I want to be a great father. Great. I mean, you better start at poor. I mean... <laughs> What, what is it going to take for you to say, okay, that's it, man. I'm not ever putting my lips to another crack pipe again. <laughs> what, what would it take? I don't know. I don't really know. You know, I mean, I'm, all I can say is I've had the course and I'm, I've, I'm ready to throw in the towel. I would like to think that if it were the other way around, I would have stopped at my kids, you know? I mean, there's one thing from stealing from complete strangers, there's one thing from stealing from me or any of your other family, but your children, you know? I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing that you'd stop at, and you know it as well as I do. There's, there's no line that you wouldn't cross. You haven't worked in a long time, and when you do, the money goes straight to what you need, whether we're completely broke, whether the kids need diapers, whether the kids need food, whatever, you know, whatever it may be. I've given you money to go get those things and you end up taking off for days. I don't know what to think anymore. I mean, you say that you're sorry. I've seen you cry, I've seen you, but you don't see our children cry every night about it. You don't see me cry every night about it or else you just don't care. And you've had to steal because of him not doing anything for you. Yeah, rent was due. The kids needed school, well, Saray needed school clothes, the kids needed diapers, um, the kids needed food, the kids needed clothes. They needed lots and lots of things. Um, I wasn't getting any help from him whatsoever. I'm not, um, any listen, money I'm that not, we did I'm have, not blaming you. No, I'm right. just saying his actions drove you to whatever you had to do. Definitely. Um, so, yeah, I, I stole the kids' clothes. I stole the kids' diapers. Um, I stole what the kids needed. Um, I feel really, you know, really bad, really bad for it and really bad about it. I mean, but I don't know. I don't know what to do anymore. I mean, I can't go to him with these money problems. You know what I mean? I can't go to him with any of my problems because he's not a husband. He's not a father. You know what I mean? He's not there for any of this, anything, whether, you know, I can tell him over and over again that the kids need something and he'll depend on someone in his family to help us and that's good enough to him. People say all the time, I'm, all, I'm only destroying my life, my life. Look how many lives you're destroying up here. One time you put a pipe to your lips, you lost your, I mean, you didn't lose everything because your family's yeah, standing by you control. still. And willpower and respect from my wife and children. You lost yourself. You lost who you are. Right. You tell me, why am I going to help you? You're a fighter, right? You're a boxer? That's right. This is it, man. This is the fight of your life. I want to do the right thing. I want to be a good father and a good husband. I don't want to keep going like this no more. You are the father. Get off my stage. To stay with your husband? I want, if it was a perfect, you know what I mean, if I could have it the way I wanted it to be, I would love to. I would love for us to be a family, but I mean, I've heard it so many times before, but I've never actually seen any actions taken to do so. So basically, 
I'm here today that either you do something, you step up to the plate, you change, you be a father, you do grow up, you know, grow up, take care of your responsibilities. You've been doing this for way too long now and not taking any steps to change, none whatsoever. And if you don't, I definitely want a divorce and you won't see the children. But, uh... Let's bring let's bring Sheree back out. Why are you doing the drug the drug debt? Why do you um why do you steal our stuff? Why do you why do you do it? To this happens a lot more than you think it does. They're all miserable. Sorry, sweetie. I want you to stop. I don't want you to do the drug anymore. You guys mean everything to me. You're my family. I love you so much. I need help. Sorry. I need help. I'm going to try to get it. Okay. <laughs> You are truly a very lucky man in this life because I don't Thank know you, too Steve. many women, too many children that would stand by their man, their father, after everything that you put them through. And they still, still here, still standing by you, still want you back. To go through all that and have people stand by you you are one of the luckiest guys I've ever met. Thank you. So the truth of it is though, a lot of people, a lot of people out there that could use help, addicted to drugs, addicted to all kinds of things. You tell me, why am I gonna help you, Don? Why you? You wanna, you're a fighter, right? You're a boxer? That's right. This is it, man. This is the fight of your life. That's Why? Right. You, you want help. You make the fight. Why I should help you. Because I want to do the right thing. I want to be a good father and a good husband. I don't want to have to worry about my children never going down this road. I don't want them to ever get curious of what made their father not want to be there. I'm tired of the way this hurts my family. I'm tired of the way this makes me feel. I have no pride. I have no esteem left. I burned all my bridges. And I don't want to keep going like this no more. You know, there's only one thing left for me to lose besides material things, and that's my wife and my children. They're the most important to me. I want the help. I want to. I want to do the right thing. Well, you better dig deep, Don. You better dig deep and find that former boxer that you once were, and you better go into this thinking, this is it. This is this is life or death, or life for them to get their father, their husband back. You know what, Don, I'm gonna help you. You know, one of the reasons why I'm gonna help you, and it's the biggest reason, because you haven't made one excuse. You haven't blamed anybody. You haven't blamed it on anything. You're admitting everything you did. You know, they say the first step is, is being willing to admit it and to be honest. And, uh, you know, I've hurt my family enough and I've done some disgusting things and 
I don't see how a beautiful woman like this or my children would want anything to do with me. But, you know, I guess that love overpowers, you know, and that we do love each other. And, and I, I, I believe with the right kind of help that love will take me out of this. Well, I'll, I'm, I'm going to help you, Don. I'm going to help you. I can give you help, and then I'm going to send you to ABT, A Better Tomorrow. And we sent people there before, and they've beat it. But we've sent people that haven't beat it. There's no guarantees with it. I can give you help, but I can't make you stop. That's right. Only you can really do that, Don. But you got to find that fight deep inside there, man. You better keep, you better for yourself, for your children, for your wife, you better make this the toughest fight of your life. You better pull some willpower out of your Thank you. Let's go, you're going to be here. Get to it. Thank you. I love you, sweetie. I love you too. Okay. I love you too. Okay. Let's go. It's been 34 days. Let's see how Donnie's doing. Let's bring him out. It's been 34 days. Let's see how Donnie's doing. Let's bring him out. <laughs> you look, just right off the bat, you look like a totally different guy. Thank you. I mean, you were up here before, you looked like a ghost. I was. So, how was rehab? I loved it. It was the greatest experience of my life. It was great. Anything hard about rehab? Just being away from my family, I miss them. Uh, you know, my son started playing t-ball and stuff and kept asking when I was going to be coming home and told me that I promised him that I'd take him off fishing. So uh, yeah, that was the hardest part pretty much. So you've gone through the rehab and you're clean now? I am clean, absolutely clean. I mean, your story was tough to listen to as, as a human being, as a father, knowing everything that you put your family through, stealing from your, from your kids, taking your daughter to the crack house. When you look back and you think about that, what runs through your head? Uh, you know, Steve, I, somewhere along the way, I, I lost who I was in my soul. And, you know, I just, I didn't have God in my life. And... I just, I was persecuting myself when it really wasn't my place to. I feel that I've, I've beat myself up enough and I'm ready to move on and do the right thing by my children and my wife. We have your wife on the phone. Let's, let's hear what she has to say. Hello. Kim? I just wanted to tell you that I miss you and I want you to know that I'm very proud of you. Um, me and the kids are all very proud of you. We all miss you very much. And um, I can't wait for you to come home. Um, you know, the kids have been really upset with you gone. They miss you a lot. I miss you a lot. And I just want you to know how proud I am of you, and I knew you could do it. And I'm excited for when you come home and start all over again and to get our marriage to where it should be and for you to be the father that you should be. So I miss you. I miss you too. Now, when you were on the show, you went straight from the stage, you went to rehab, you went to ABT. That's right. A better tomorrow. And you haven't seen your family in how many days now? 34. 34. So you've got to be pretty anxious to leave this show and get back and go <laughs> yeah, see your family. I would say so. All right. Well, we got a surprise for you because your wife is actually here. Really? Let's go. <laughs> Thank you. 
Ja, dat is een goede man. Ja, dat is een goede There you go. When you were on the show, people backstage were saying, wow, she's so pretty. Why is she with him? But now you see who he really is. He's a good looking guy. But you probably haven't seen that good looking guy in a while, huh? <laughs> Not for a long time. It's shocking to see the difference in him, isn't it? It's crazy. I it knew. It's crazy. I don't know. I'm just really proud of you. I'm really proud of you, and I missed you <laughs> a I lot. Miss you and too. I just, I love you. I love you. I, I, I got to say, too, everybody goes through life. You have your problems, and you work through it. But you went through so much. And to stand by your man through everything that he put you through, very commendable. I, So he's been through the rehab now. He's been, he was in there for 34 days. He's got cleaned up. Do you believe that he's changed, that he's going to be able to stay clean? I um, have definitely seen a big, I mean, I've talked to him over the phone, um, and I've noticed a big difference in him already. Um, there's many times before, like it's been seven years that he's been doing this off and on, that he'd say he'd change and um, he'd go back to it and I've never seen what I've seen in the past month like he's just seems to be giving it his all and I mean I've read letter or he's read letters to me that he's written apologizing for things that not just his um doing drugs but for everything that it entailed from his selfishness to his um what he's done to his kids to everything which he never before actually it was always he was just sorry for doing the drugs and he's realizing every other thing that he did as well. So, I mean, yeah, I've definitely noticed a huge difference, and I'm just really proud of you. <laughs> Thank you, man. Really and proud of you. <laughs> and your, your children, did they, they, they must have been asking about dad, what's he, how's he doing? Yeah, um, our 12-year-old knew, obviously, where he was, because she was here. Um, the last show, my four-year-old and two-year-old, they knew something wasn't right with their father, but um, they obviously didn't know exactly what. So I didn't feel that it was, I didn't want to tell them where he was. They thought that he was away visiting friends, but they knew he was gone and they knew that he was working on himself and <coughs> he was going to come home and be a better father. Um, our son cried every night that you were gone. Um, <coughs> He misses you a lot, and he keeps talking about when his dad comes home, he's going to be a better father. And um, they're all really excited, including Saray. And um, I just hope that you don't let them down. I'm not going to. Anything you want to say to your wife? Yes, I do. I want to say thank you, and I love you. And you saved my life, because had you uh, quit on me, I'd probably still be out there killing myself. So, I really appreciate you and the kids and what you've done for me. You make me want to be a better man. You make me want to change my life. I love you. And we have Kim from A Better Tomorrow. You too. John, it is an honor and a pleasure to, produce, uh, to give you this certificate that you have completed the 28 plus four days of treatment at A Better Tomorrow Treatment Center. <laughs> Thank you.
Well, I, I want to thank uh, A Better Tomorrow because we've been working with you for a long time now, and you really have had a lot of incredible success with a lot of the people that we've sent out to. So yes. we wouldn't be able to help a lot of people if it wasn't for A Better Tomorrow. So I want to thank you very much. <laughs> Donnie, we got one more surprise for you. Your kids are here too. Let's bring them out. What is my baby? It's my baby. Hi, pretty girl. I love you. Hi, son. I missed you. I'm gonna go to uh, town and go swimming. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. I wanna do all those things. I wanna watch you play t-ball. We're gonna go fishing, camping, all that stuff. We're gonna have some fun fun. That's awesome. Saray, you're the one who initially emailed the show and asked for its help. Is there okay. anything you want to say to your dad? I'm very proud of him, and I miss him. <laughs> Good luck to you. Thanks. Good luck to you, John. Hope it works out for you. I want to thank you. And like I said, most of all, it's I want to thank you as well. All right, Kim? You saved my life. You guys saved my life. And uh, I'm very thankful for that. Well, let's go have fun with your family. Come on. All right. Stay